I'm Katie. This is Stories and Stones, a channel about everything spooky and creepy and weird. And this is part two of viral horror movie marketing. If you didn't watch part one, you missed some wild stuff, so be sure to go watch that. Not right now. You can watch it after this. It'll still be there. I'm only covering two movies this time, so the video won't be super long. Uh, so there might be a part three if I'm not sick of talking about movies after this. First up, a remake that I didn't even know existed. The original Carrie came out in 1976, the movie anyway. Um, it's a Stephen King classic, the novel that it was based on, about a high school girl that gets bullied and has her revenge with her telekinetic powers. You've probably seen it, or at least heard about it. I saw it when I was like eight years old, which is way too young to see Carrie. If you know what it's about, um, you can imagine <laughs> that's a little young to be seeing Carrie. Um, in 2000, a remake of Carrie was made. To promote the film, there was a prank set up in a coffee shop called Snice, which was clearly named to specifically target my speech impediment. Do you think I should sue them? I don't know if they're still around. I don't know if they survived the pandemic. I'll have to look that up. Um, anyhow, it was in Manhattan's West Village, and they did this prank in front of unsuspecting customers. Let's watch the video. This lady had a premonition that something weird was going to happen today, and she was ready for it. <laughs> I couldn't find any information about how the people who were subjected to this prank felt about it, which is a bummer and also kind of sus. I did find this quote from the advertising agency's co-founder, Michael Kravika. The baristas were all in on it because we had to rehearse. The cafe was largely populated by extras, performers, and stunt crew, and only a handful of people had no idea what was coming. And the staff of SNICE did confirm this version of events to the reporter, and uh, Michael Kravika went on to say, once the reaction was captured, we applauded and came out to thank them for participating and filled them in. But how much PTSD did you cause before you came out clapping and explaining everything to him? Um, he goes on to say, we have a certain degree of control over the situation, so nothing terrible happens. We can't just go up to someone on the street and give them a heart attack. When picking marks, we have to do things like feel them out, figure out if they fight back violently, or if they'd be too frail. I don't know how they do medical questions, wouldn't you feel like something was about to happen? I don't know. I wasn't there. I've never been, never been a part of one of these things, but anyway, most of the people being actors in the coffee shop that day makes a lot more sense. For the second movie today, we're going way back to a classic. Uh, perhaps the great, great granddaddy of viral movie marketing would be Alfred Hitchcock 
and his 1960 film Psycho. Even if you've never seen the original, you've definitely heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, are you okay? Are you new to the planet Earth? Welcome. The whole intention with this film was to not allow even the slightest leak of information about it. The film's stars, Anthony Perkins and Janet Leigh, didn't do the usual media interviews about upcoming films that actors and actresses usually do, and critics were not allowed to have private screenings to give it the thumbs up or thumbs down or, you know, the usual thing that critics do, and you couldn't show up to the movie late, even by a few minutes, and expect to get in. Signs outside the theater showing Psycho read, We won't allow you to cheat yourself. You must see Psycho from the very beginning. Therefore, do not expect to be admitted into the theater after the start of each performance of the picture. We say no one, and we mean no one. Not even the manager's brother, the president of the United States, or the Queen of England. And also posters featuring the imposing presence of the director Alfred Hitchcock himself read, it is required that you see Psycho from the very beginning. And then it would say the next showing, what time it starts. The manager of this theater has been instructed at the risk of his life not to admit to the theater any persons after the picture starts. Any spurious attempts to enter by side doors, fire escapes, or ventilating shafts, were people doing that? Will be met by force. The entire objective of this extraordinary policy, of course, is to help you enjoy Psycho more. And I just want to go back to um, the manager of this theater has been instructed at the risk of his life. Was Alfred Hitchcock gonna show up and uh, shoot you in the head if you didn't obey? It's very threatening, but hey, 1960, things were different. Um, <laughs> Uh, and now, we will hear from Hitchcock himself in this 1960 press release about the rules for seeing Psycho in theaters. marketing ploy was an absolute success. Not only did Psycho make oodles of money, not only for Paramount, the production company, and Hitchcock, but for the theaters everywhere that showed it. The movie was nominated for four Oscars and has inspired parodies in cartoons and sitcoms to this day. And of course, there were remakes of the movie. That's all I have for you this time. Um, hope you had a good Halloween. Be good. Brush your teeth. Take your vitamins. Bye.